Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. We got a big show today. Big show, D'Anthony. Uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Thank you for for saying that. I, I, I haven't heard you this excited in a long time. Well, I'm usually not awake this early, to be honest. I know. Weird, right? So I've had to pump myself full of caffeine and Adderall. Really, really uh, get the juices going oh, yeah. here. Big time. Um, we've got a brand new show, uh, Bowling with Favre is out now with uh, Eric Bowling and former, well, former Atlanta Falcon greats, Brett Favre. Uh, welcome to the show. Brett, I got to, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, even he's whinging at that, like, nah, I don't think so. I'm a Falcons fan, <laughs> Brett, and every single day of my life, I think about what it would have been like had you been our quarterback. Better is how it would have been. Do you ever think that? Oh. Do you ever think to yourself, man, I really could have led them to that title that they, they just could never get? You know, not really. <laughs> you, know, uh, <laughs> it, you know, if it were meant to be, I, I would have stayed there. And, uh, <laughs> it, it, you know, it, the best thing about going to Atlanta is it got me to Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. right? Brett's got a great Jerry Jerry Glanville story, I'm sure. Right? Oh boy! Right. Oh boy, Glen, dude, Glanville. So I I'm a Georgia kid, right? I grew up in Georgia. Um, Glanville used to come to some of the high school games, and full cowboy, like he was in character every single day. Um, he was living the life of Jerry Glanville. Um, what, what's your craziest Jerry Glanville story, Brett? Um, well, I, I was only there for a year, but. Uh, I, I've, I've spoken about it a fair amount about the fact that he didn't like me from day one. And I, I think the reason for that was, is not so much that he, and I don't, I, I, I haven't confirmed this, not that it matters, but I think for, it was not so much that he disliked me, but it was, he disliked the decision to draft me. <clears throat> not, I don't think he wanted a quarterback at, at all. He wanted a different position. I was the fourth at Falcon to be picked that day. It was, uh, we had three first round picks and I was the 33rd pick and so early second round. But anyway, so I get drafted the next day after flight to Atlanta and um, we have a mini camp. I used to have a mini camp, two and a half day deal. Mm -hmm. So I get there, I, my flight's delayed a little bit from, from Gulfport, Mississippi to Atlanta. So I'm a little late getting out to practice. Um, this was April, you know, right after the draft. So I'm walking out on the field, and the guy who picked me up at the airport, a guy named Danny Mock, who uh, was a scout uh, at the time, had reassured me on the whole ride from the airport to Sewanee that it, this happens all the time. Don't worry about it. I, you know, I'm, I'm like, not a good way to start. Late for practice. So I get my, it was shorts and, and just jerseys for practice. And I'm, I'm walking out on the field. They are practicing. Jerry's standing there with his back to me. He's got a black windbreaker on. He had black Bermuda shorts on and a black cowboy hat. And he had a horn sticking out of his back pocket. I remember it vividly. And Danny says, hey, coach, coach, coach. And he kind of gets his attention. And he turns around and looks, and he's got dark sunglasses on. And he says, yeah, I, I got your quarterback, uh, Brett Favre. And he said, Mississippi, Mississippi. <laughs> I said, yes, sir. He said, what school are you from, Mississippi? I said, Southern Miss, coach. You know, I'm, I'm brown-nosing. Yeah. Anything I can do to get in, uh, get in his corner. And he goes, Southern Miss. Uh, dang, we picked the wrong guy. We wanted a guy from Mississippi State. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know whether that was a just a funny joke or, boy, I don't want you. Yeah. But I'm going because Ken Harrod drafted you. I'm going to allow you on my team, but I'm going to make life miserable on you. 
Yeah. Well, ultimately, the uh, joke was on him, right? Yeah. The joke's been on, not on him, but on the Falcons as a franchise, yeah. uh, all of our fan base. Uh, me as a person, um, it's, it's really affected me and some of the life decisions I've made. Well, like Jerry Glenville's still alive. He's 79 years old. We can go find him. Is he? Yeah. I think he's in his 90s. Uh, yeah, is he? It says he was born in 41 here. 1941? Said, yeah. Right. So, well, maybe it's, it's who the fuck knows? It's Wikipedia. Ah, who cares? Know. Yeah, anybody, okay, so he's 80. Yeah, so yeah, he's, he's close to 80 right now. Yeah, he's 80, um, yeah. The fact that he's still alive is amazing. I, I, yeah, I would like to find him and ask him about all of his life decisions. Um, <laughs> let's, send, let's send him a Brett Favre jersey. Like from the Super Bowl. Oh, he we'll find one on online. It, it has happened, by the way. Yeah. I know. I know that that, that has happened, and uh, and a bunch of Falcons fans uh, have done that over the years. Uh, gentlemen, we, we appreciate you being here. You guys are new to the podcast world, Eric. Obviously, I watched you for years on Fox. Uh, how are you enjoying the new podcast uh, and everything that's that's going on here? Because it's a it's a different, a little more different freedom. format. A little more yeah. freedom. Yeah, you can do whatever the hell you want, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm i pretty sure. Well, I could be wrong, but I'm not, I, I don't think we can get canceled. Uh, cancel culture can't can't really get us. I, I no. Mean, yeah. At like so Fox and my last 20 years on television, you have to like measure every word. Now you're being judged from shit you said 20 years ago. Yeah. yeah. And may have <laughs> said, oops, I made a mistake and apologized 47,000 times in between. Mm. But They'll still, you know, try and run you up the flagpole if you say something wrong again. But here, now listen, we're having a this is we're new to this. We did we just taped our, I think our ninth, ninth show. Last week we had Dr. Phil on. It was it just it blew up. It went everywhere. We were, we're they pulled us to entertainment tonight. Nice. Yep. Um Ted Nugent, we just taped a Ted Nugent show and it was just off the freaking hook, man. You can, say, you can say any of the You can say fucking on want, here. That's yeah. the beauty of podcasting. Yeah. You, you can say you fucking want. all yeah. of it. If if that's what's in your heart. <laughs> Look, if we were, well, if, if it was well, I generally don't to like canceled. to say fuck. It's just one of those, I mean, I, it's not that I want to say it and I hold back. It's just, you know, I'm just, whatever, for whatever reason. Oh. I just grew up saying it when I was really pissed off, but not saying when I was. I, I, dude, I heard Dr. Phil say the word fuck one time. Uh, did he say it but on I your show? He said shit on our podcast oh, last wow. week, right, Brett? Let's cancel yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. canceling Dr. Phil. Uh, <laughs> I, do, you, do you guys, you ever watch South Park, Eric? I got a question for you. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, okay, so is Dr. Phil and, and Mr. Mackey, the guidance counselor, the same guy? No. Mr. Mackey, mm, drugs and bad and okay. That guy? Yeah, yeah. 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 And you, and <laughs> yeah no, okay, no, you did, wait, you did that. Now do, a, now do a Dr. Phil impression and see if it sounds the Dr. same. Dr. Phil? Uh, I want to send you away to drug rehab because you're clearly using too many drugs if you think I'm not cool. So the cadence is the same. It's just the different words. Just the different words. I see. <clears throat> drugs and bad. And no, there's a little bit of an arrogance to to uh, Mr. Mackey, right? He's like a little he's judgy, got, yeah. He's like superiority where Dr. Yeah. Phil gets down with you. Like he's in your in your world, in your in your wheelhouse and in, in you don't want Dr. Phil, you don't want Brett Favre to be pissed at you. You know, yeah. you don't want Dr. Phil, you don't want Brett Favre to be pissed at you. It's just, just the feeling. Mr. Mackey, you're like, F you, Mr. Mackey. I'm going to do my shit. You're Mr. Mackey. I, I, there's a, like a hierarchy thing. So going Dr. On. Phil Mr. is Mackey just a, a superior. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. Dr. Phil is a yeah. slightly more uh, evolved version. I guess. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I look. I, I I heard him tell tell somebody to fuck off in L.A. The, the studio he taped at was was right up the street from where I was living. I lived in Los Angeles for eighteen years. Um, so I used to, I used to see him pull out. Uh, he had this vanity license plate that said Doctor Phil, as if you needed to know it. Um, and and it was a convertible, so you could see him. And you know, some security guard or somebody was in front of the, the, the parking thing or whatever, and he was like, "Hey, hey." Get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit. It's, that was, it's weird, see, you know, hearing that's, Dr. Phil say that. You love awesome that, though. though. Yeah, I, I love, love it. it. I, but like, there's more a, people should know about that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But, and then he speeds off, um, and it's, it's amazing. And it was like, it was classic Dr. Phil. And I was like, holy shit. And then years later, something popped up where uh, his house, the interior of his house was for sale. And it was all decked out and like kind of goth and like just wild shit inside Dr. Phil's house. One of his like 18 houses, I'm sure. But I was shocked by it. I was like, oh, all right. Maybe Dr. Phil gets down like that. Um, who knows? I, I'd like maybe to party with him. Like what? 
uh you know this like like army hammer like he he's got like a crazy side <laughs> like behind this this the this, this scenes you know like where he's, it's just like he's <laughs> like he's wearing he's wearing gold <laughs> chains and shit and just like rocking people that talk shit to him at nightclubs late at night yeah you know I mean? like i think there's a cool side of, how, you guys of dr <laughs> phil wait wait hang on because there's people that there's two mistakes that i've made i think dr phil's got a cool side and then brett this one's for you I've, I've always thought that Tom Brady was just kind of gimpy personality wise over the years. A little weird. Yes. Yeah. But behind the scenes, there's been some footage now over the last like year that made me suggest like, oh shit, is Tom Brady secretly cool and we just don't know it? Yeah. I think he's secretly cool. Brett, do you yeah. know him personally? Uh, yeah. I, I, the, he definitely secretly, you know, he's stolen the, the Super Bowl trophy or replica <laughs> either way from one boat to another <laughs> and supposedly is sober. Which is even more incredible. Wait, <laughs> wait, he's so he was supposedly sober when he's stumbling around talking about avocado uh, martinis and shit. He was he was weekend at Bernie's by the end of that thing. Yeah, he looked like he was rock pretty good there, but maybe not on the boat yet. Yeah, for the boat part, he may have been sober. Yeah, and that was one of his better passes this season. Too. Yeah, but, but but like behind the scenes, is he cool? Is oh, he, wait, whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, he's a good dude. You guys step dude. back. That one of his better passes this season. The oh. guy's Super Bowl champion. No, yeah, for MVP. sure. I, he had a great year for sure. But I'm that good. was the toughest pass he made all year. Let's that, face it. it was, that yeah, was that could have been detrimental. Yeah. That, had that, that was one of his one of his most ill advised passes. <laughs> hey, you know what though? But, but it was completed. It was a completion. Yeah, yeah. It was a completion, right? See, Brett's, right, Brett. Brett's got his and back over that, there. The quarterback's got his back. Because we had a uh, we 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 had Gronkowski on a couple weeks ago, and he goes, "Look, man, he threw between two defenders. Yeah, he, like he really put that in. Best yeah. pass of the year for him. Yeah. But but you you have to know him behind the scenes. Two two yeah, legends, two goats. Yeah. Is he cool? Is he like slightly funny? Yeah, yeah, he's a good Catholic kid. Okay, there you um, go. I mean, you know. No, that's fine. You, you answered my question. No, you, it's 50-50. Like, he's cool enough to have dinner with, but you're not going to go do, like, you know, party with him in Vegas and do some blow or anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, sir, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, who, who is it? Who's the cool guy for you? Like, behind the scenes that, that nobody knows about that you, that you used to rage with. And you're like, man, this guy's a blast in real life. Gosh, man. Uh, it's been 20 years since I drank. Uh, Is it really? 22 years. It's been about an hour for us. <laughs> 98. So uh, I, I'll say this. When I quit drinking, uh, maybe a couple of months in, into sobriety, I realized that... I wasn't as much fun as I thought I was. So mm. I, I would uh. say prior to, I thought I was the cool dude mm. like that you wanted to hang with. And then when I got sober, I realized, first of all, being around drunk people is not fun. No, not unless you're also drunk. Yeah, not unless, yeah. yeah. No. They're the worst and, if you're yeah. sober. And I realized that, you know, and they're, oh, man, you're knowing that the next day they don't remember anything. So, you know, like this conversation is absolutely 100% useless, <laughs> <laughs> at least for me. It's like listening to somebody recount one of their dreams. Like, no, just shut up. Stop yeah, anybody right who, who wants to talk about their dreams, I I, I'm like, stuff. stop. I don't want to hear about your fucking dreams. No, you know what I do want to hear about is, so there's nine people in the history of the NFL that have won multiple MVP awards. Uh -huh. There's uh, uh, six people that have won three or more. You're one of them, Brett. That's pretty impressive. And all of them are in the Hall of Fame except for the guys that are currently active, which is Brady and Rodgers. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. That's, that's everything like, I've accomplished. I'm extremely thankful for, uh, as you would expect. I mm -hmm. mean, look, I grew up in South Mississippi. My dad's my football coach. We ran the wishbone and the wing tee. Two offenses that the younger generation have zero knowledge of mm. and don't even know what it is. All they know now is, is RPOs and, and shotgun. And um, so to, to, to have achieved all this when I never threw a pass in high school is nothing short of incredible. So how did you get through high school not throwing up? You have an absolute I, I rock. No, yeah, wait, it's, it's the wing T, but it's the wing T. Yeah, I'm not underestimating. Like you, but you have a rocket for an arm. How, like, how did that happen? It depends on what your coach is running, though, you know, offensively. It was, it, was, it, it was an era where the colleges and even pros who threw it more than high school and colleges for the most part, but still it was a run-oriented system. 
you know, ac across the country. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I remember back when Oklahoma would be playing Miami in the Orange Bowl and they had the tearaway jerseys, you know, that um, it, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Oklahoma. yeah. Tom Osborne. Maybe one pass is being thrown in this game. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it was – yeah, it was run, run, run. And you're right. I could throw it, you know, and my dad, and this is no, no joke when this was back in the era where there was not instantaneous news. So if you wanted to, to go recruit, if you were a coach in college and you wanted to go see the players, there wasn't YouTube, there wasn't send me some highlights over the phone. You had to go put your feet on the ground, log the miles and go recruit. So when they would come to our high school and, you know, back then, you, you made a visit to pretty much every high school and it was word of mouth, more or less. Like, you got to go see this kid over at Hancock, North Central. Then he'd come watch. The, the one coach that stands out was the offensive line coach at Southern Miss who was recruiting the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And he and my dad ended up striking up a great friendship. And he came back periodically, I think, because they like to drink beer together. But he was like... My dad's name was Irvin. He would say, Irvin, now look, if I'm going to go back and tell the head coach that your son's worthy of, you know, a scholarship offer, you got to throw it. Yeah. Now he you're, said, well, you're... just come pregame and you'll see him throw it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what he told every coach. That would come. And so like pregame, he'd be like, all right, now throw, throw it as far as you can. I mean, we didn't do routes. We didn't do a, right. a, a, a pregame route tree or something. That that was uh, uh, that that was foreign language. Right. It was like, yeah. And I throw it seventy eight, eighty yards, and you know, <laughs> you'd Christ. hear people, ooh. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then yeah. they'd watch that, the game. That's basically, how I got my foot in the door. Yeah. Well, it turns out your uh, whatever your dad did worked, and then he was, I mean, obviously a big part of your life moving on. Everybody remembers the game where you passed away and you continued to play went 22 for 30 and just had one of the better games of your career. That's super like everybody in the crowd is choke holding back tears the whole time, but also very proud of you for performing like that. It was a great night. It, yeah. 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 It, it, it was, um, you know, I wish the circumstances were different, but, Sure. you know, um, it is what it is. And I, I played because he would have wanted me to play. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we did. Well, I remember those, drives home from practice um, and, and drives to school and sitting down for supper. And, and it was football, you know, it, that's all it was. So the, the, to play was a no brainer mm -hmm. to play and honor him was the tough part. Right. And, and, and I feel like I accomplished that. Well, you were clearly locked in. Yeah, I, I, Lord. And, and I hate to say this, Brett, I was in the fantasy football championship that night and you were my starting mm -hmm. quarterback. Uh, no lie, you you your performance won me that that entire league. I'll never forget that game my entire life. Um, yeah, it, it was uh, it was incredible what you did. I mean, it's Monday Night Football, man. Y yes, ev everybody was watching. Like the entire world was watching that night, and uh, and it was amazing. Now, how did yeah. the two of you guys hook up for a podcast? Yeah. It seems like an odd pairing, Eric. Yeah, so um, I was doing a show, um, a national uh, show, and we were going to do. Uh, a show about opioids my i lost my son to an opioid overdose mm -hmm. and i'd read that brett um has a, a, you know he's, he's outspoken about the opioid crisis as well he went through his uh, you know a, 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 an era of of opioid addiction and and I, I just contacted him and say hey brett would you would you sit down with me we we put about an hour about 40 minutes of, of content for an hour show on tape and it just took off we we aired it um well, I went down. I flew down to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and Brett and I threw the threw a baseball around on 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 the the, the baseball uh, stadium because I played pro baseball my before I got into TV, mm. um, and we threw the ball around. We got to got to know each other a little bit. We we got along very well, and we realized this is an important topic. We aired the show, and and. It was at Thanksgiving. The, the 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 I was with Sinclair. Sinclair came back and said, "We got such a huge outreach. Can you play? We're going to replay that show for Christmas special and a New Year's special." So we had something like, and then I just called Brad and I'm like, "Hey, you you want to do a, a podcast? We can talk about everything. We talk about sports. Sure, well, let's talk about everything. Culture, you know, you know politics, mm -hmm. 
Kardashians, whatever. And we, that's what we do. We kind of rip it around kind of probably what you guys do. Only we, we do it from Hattiesburg, Mississippi and Charleston, South Carolina. Mm, Charleston's nice. Yeah. Charleston's gorgeous down there. Yeah. Bill, uh, Bill Murray's down there. If you could wrangle him in for a show. Yeah. Our buddy AJ yeah. Buckley from uh, SEAL team from CSI, New York, a bunch of other shows. He, he lives down. There. He just moved to Mount Pleasant. Uh, yeah. About, yeah. A, about a week Bill, ago, actually. Bill and I come from Chicago originally. Yeah. I think I went to high school with his younger brother, Joel Murray. I love Bill. I didn't know that. You got to get, we got to have him on our show. Yeah. Here. yeah. Like he, what, kind of, what kind of clout you have. I think he owns a <laughs> restaurant or two here in Charleston. Yeah. yeah he, he owns the minor league owning, baseball team. Yeah. What yeah. is it? The Charlotte Devil River no, Dogs? The, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like the River Dogs. Yeah. He owns that yeah. team. Yeah. yeah he yeah, owns a team. Uh, yeah. Uh, Charleston River. I think it's some, some river yeah, yeah. or something or some bullshit. Yeah, know. there's a river there. There's, yeah. a, there's an ocean nearby, too. There's a lot of a lot of aquatics down there. A lot of um, stuff going on. It's mostly water. Danny McBride is also uh, living Danny there as well. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> if you want to roll down, I know they're shooting Righteous Gemstones they season there, yeah. two. Yeah. So John, right Goodman, now. John Goodman's in town, too. Yeah, John uh, Goodman's down there. You can get him on the show. I'll work on booking your show for you, folk, for you fellas. No, no, I'm, I'm talking for about guys, for you right? guys. I'm talking about oh, for, for you guys. Thanks. That way you can get them in studio where it's like, all right, cool. Because uh, I'm sure those guys would be fun to hang with. Yeah. Not not nearly as fun as Dr. Phil. I mean, you, <laughs> well, you're missing it. He's so cool. That's because Dr. Phil at night is out there raging, rocking people in the face to talk shit. Yes. Wearing a gold chain. He's probably got a gold platinum, change, yeah. platinum grill, too. Gold grill. If you yeah. think you have a podcast and it's going to beat mine, I'll kill you. Wham. Yeah, Dr. Phil is a murderer that's behind how, the scenes. That's how he stayed on top. He's been murdering the competition for years. Yes. Yes. He's been, we figured it out here. This is not a conspiracy theory show, but Dr. I guess Phil it is. is an assassin. <laughs> he's, he's like that movie. Uh, oh, yeah. The. About the game show. The dangerous mind. Yes, it's Dr. <laughs> Phil behind the scenes. Oh, boy. You don't find it weird that Oprah just picked him out of nowhere? Like, no, he's, a, he's an assassin working well, for the actually, government. Actually, he was working on a consulting firm that she owned, or that she was using. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even stranger. No, it's not. If you read the story, it's not strange at all. He really? He was really talented at what he was doing before. Yeah, good for yeah. Dr. Phil. Uh, so, yeah, you guys got together, uh, did some stuff, and now how's it going? How are you feeling about it? Yeah, because you're, well? you're, in, you're in episode nine, nine and yeah. ten right now. Uh, you feel confident in it? Is, is the flow going for you guys? Yeah, right. yeah right. it was good. We've had great guests, uh, which would certainly helps. Uh, mm -hmm. But we have a good rapport with each other, and um, it's, you know, you guys have been doing it, so mm. it, it's, it's pretty painless. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the key is, and it's always a toss up, find something that people are interested in, at least enough people are interested in that you keep, you keep going. So, yeah. so we, so Brett brought on a good friend of his, Darius Rucker, a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago. And, and I, he lives here, happens to live here in South Carolina. I've yep. seen him in bar. Great guy. Seen him in bars, hung out with him, had a drink with him before, but didn't know him. Brett knew him extremely well. And, and he comes on. And I, did, so I asked him, well, you know, how'd you get started? Did you know that Darius was singing in, in, in the shower at the University of South Carolina, singing alone? He blew off class. And, and, a, and another student walked in. A guy, he's like, hey, I play guitar. Was that you? He said, yeah. And, and that's how Hootie and the Blowfish started. That's, that's crazy. really that's love. crazy. Yeah, yeah. We're, you, we're, you would think it would be some some major ordeal, but it was pretty simple. Yeah. You know. Were, were uh, the other guys in the shower with him? Like, how did he get the blowfish? Stop it! What? They Nobody. How buddies. did he get the blowfish? They were buddies. Oh, they were yeah, buddies. All, okay. I mean, I'm sure the, yeah. the guitarist probably had his own band going on. They're always just looking for a singer, right? That's how it works in college bands. Yeah, yeah. You put out like flyers and things like yep. that, but yep. you never know. Um, you guys had Adam Carolla on not too long ago. I, and that's, I listened to that. Good. I just listened to that Adam that Carolla a, episode. Yeah, it was a really good show. There was, a, there was yeah. an interesting thing you guys were talking about with him about cancel culture and, and can you be canceled from podcasts because you have sponsors and things like that. I wanted to answer that for you, and it's, it's yes, by the way. Well, I mean, technically, yes. So we just booted one of our sponsors, uh, Harry's, the shaving company, because of that bullshit they pulled with Daily Wire. All I, right. did, all I did was ask them, like, hey, I want you to get somebody from Harry's to come on, not on the show, just to call me and have a conversation with me about why you decided to do that, because I've listened to that episode. I know Michael Knowles, mm -hmm. and I know that he's not what you're saying he is, and I listened to the episode. There's nothing in there that's objectionable. He just gave someone... A platform and was completely uh, uh, he was he critiqued the whole time didn't make a judgment call on it at all and then you decided to pull your shit because some dude with like seven Twitter followers had a problem with it right, it, right? It, it, can we just talk about that for a second what Absolutely. the hell is going here's the and we talk about it a lot because we bring guests on but 
You're right. Knowles, he's a right. Knowles is a good guy. He's not a racist. He's not a ranter. Hell it's, no. it's, it, that's ridiculous. But here's the problem. You know, when when the corporate boardroom su supports these cancel culture warriors, the, the army of cancel culture mob, with it basically fuels them and, and, and loads their ammo into their into their guns. It allows them to, 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 to anything that disagrees with the with their way of thinking is now wrong, oh. racist, homophobic, Islamophobic, yeah. is a phobic is an ism and you're and you're done. You're finished with the boardroom's got to step up and get some guts and say, fight it out in the trenches on social media or, or in your media world. But we're not going to cancel your stuff just because you find it offensive. Yeah. Otherwise, we will be vanilla one way thinking and everything else will be, I don't know, struggling. Yeah, they, they will. And, um, yeah. you know, some advice that uh, I'll give you guys, because this is what we're doing currently right yeah. now, um, gearing up for this, because I, I feel like we're all, you know, well, I, I not Dan, but uh, I'm, I'm a Trump guy. I know, if, uh, Brett, you were and I, th I think you were yeah. as well, Eric. Um, uh, I, you know, I've, I voted for him. Uh, Dan's in the middle. He's got a I'm, defund politicians shirt on right yeah, now. Po politicians are useless, but I, I'm not uh, in the middle. I just make a decision on each individual issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and which is fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, but <coughs> Perfectly OK. Yeah, yeah but perfectly OK, which is great. But it, it seems like if you went for Trump, um, there is certain advertisers that will not come on our oh, show. No, we, One of them was had Audible. Audible. Audible straight up told us they wouldn't advertise on a conservative show. I'm like, well, I'm not conservative, fuck face. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it seems conservative. Like, what does that mean? It seems conservative. And, and back to the Harris thing. They, so I requested an audience with somebody from their actual organization. And they said, that's fine. As long as you don't record it. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to record it. That's against the law anyways. Like in a two party consent state. That's I used to work in uh, intelligence for the federal government. I know the fucking laws there. And the other one was as long and you can't talk about it on your show. I'm like, well, you can get fucked. Yeah. Harry's. Yeah. Like I'm going to talk about whatever the fuck I want. You can keep your $80,000 because it means nothing to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck you guys. Fuck Harry's. So be prepared for that. Um, but one thing we're doing is, uh, is developing our own product to sell. Yeah. Um, and I think it's important for a, a lot of podcasts to, to do that. Mm. That way, if they all come after all of us, cancel culture comes after all of us eventually because, you know, podcasts are getting bigger and bigger right. and they're knocking out terrestrial radio. Uh, have your own product that you can sell yourself so that way mm -hmm. you're doing yeah. it. Now, obviously, our show is called Drinking Bros. So uh, we're developing a hard seltzer. Um, that's an eight because, you know, as, as young men who are uh, in our 30s, well, one of us. Uh, we want to drink, yeah. uh, but we also want it uh, hard. We, we, we want an eight percenter. So we're developing that right now. Um, I don't know what you think of Alex Jones in real life or whatever, but uh, the reason why he was able to, to keep going after all of this is he sells his own products on yeah. there. Um, and, and he has uh, his marketing is all platform agnostic. I mean, he's collecting email addresses and phone numbers and stuff like that. You can't you uh, Eric, you won't know for sure. You can't count on social media to have your back at all. Uh, no, forget about no, the corporations. Social it's, media it's, is a it, joke. In fact, it, it's it's more detrimental. I'm, I've tons of times. And by the way, I am obviously a, Donald Trump, the man before he was president, has been a friend of mine mm. for 20 years. I've known him. And you're right. You just just because you're a Trump former Trump president, Trump supporter, mm. you, you're 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 looked at as like some evil you know person walking around now. It's amazing how the the tides have shifted in, yeah. in this short period of time. You know, insurrection on the Capitol is wrong, but everyone who now whoever supported Trump or believed in smaller government, mm. getting out of foreign wars, conservative um, conservative Supreme Court justices, lower taxes, protecting Second Amendment rights. If you believe in those things and Trump had to be your guy versus Hillary Clinton at the time, mm -hmm. then then you're somehow evil and you're somehow uh, associated with what 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 happened at the Capitol? It's bullshit. Well, it's Godwin's it's law, right? Bullshit. It's and and I don't I don't know where it stops. You have, you have Coca Cola now saying figure out c control your whiteness in in, in, <laughs> in some sort of uh, video that they train new people, new managers with, and it it, it the world is upside down right now. That's weird. And, I, and it and it happens so fast and. Is there a way to stop it? I don't know. I, I hope so. I don't either. And, you know, with Brett, I remember when you made that statement before the election that you were voting for Trump, um, you got buried 
on Twitter. Like nobody even gives you the time to explain why. Like I like the fact that we have five new peace deal agreements between Israel and Middle Eastern countries for the first time in the history of Israel or the Middle East. Okay. For the first time. I like the fact that we had a trade deficit with China, which is good for our economy. I like the fact that we had before COVID the best economy this country's seen in a very long time, particularly for black and brown people. I like all these things. Yeah. I don't like a guy that has vascular dementia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right? yeah. So, uh, I mean, no offense, but the guy's got vascular fucking dementia. So I don't want to fucking vote for a guy like that and be behind the wheel because look, we're, we're clearly in the car and the driver's asleep behind the wheel. Look at the border right now. It's fucked. Yeah. You know, I mean, nothing is getting done down there and it's because of weakness. You can't be a weak leader. It doesn't matter. Sometimes it doesn't matter even what your politics are. If you're a pussy, it doesn't work in a position of power. It just doesn't. No, um, it, it doesn't. Um, Brett, what did you go through after you dropped that statement on Twitter and, and, uh, and social media and everything? Uh, I didn't read any of it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I did, you know, what I do normally. I get up and go outside and work, uh, occasionally play golf with my brother and, and uh, three other buddies. Mm -hmm. We play once a week somewhere. And um, that was it. <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I'm not running for office. Uh, I, 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 so I, I, you know, no one personally attacked me. Right. They, Gotcha. Oh, I, they were, you mean you mean no one, no one in your actual life that you give a shit about, right? Right. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, I agree. But you maybe should run for office because there, there's this uh, phrase I use a lot that I that I wrote way back in the day, but I use it a lot, especially here recently. Uh, very rarely does someone who deserve power get it or want it, and and most people who get and want power very rarely do they deserve it. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. like it's the, the, the idea behind wanting power is very problematic and we see it every single day. I mean, look at these. You know, the, the, the election system is set up or these these Congress people, they run every two years. Yeah. Literally, the minute they win an election, they start yep. raising money for the next two year election, two years down the yep. road. And it's that's all it is. They're, they're hamsters on the wheel, mm. raising money, making promises just to stay in power. And they don't really no one. Think of one congressman or senator who really gives a shit about his constituents, who like thinks about what their their the best interests of of the people he represents in D.C. are versus his own reelection. Right. And well, people like that, people like that don't last. I mean, look at what it, happened it, to Tulsi Gabbard. No, we, regardless of what you think guys, about her we, politics, we need, she couldn't last ever in, in D.C. She would never. We need last term ever. limits yeah, where you absolutely. can be you can be in, in Congress for six years, whether it's yep. one term Senate or three terms in Congress yep. and you're done. Yeah, I agree. So that we have these career assholes mm. just, just doing whatever they can to stay in office, yep. and not worrying about what's what's best for me. Absolutely. People. Couldn't agree more with that. I, th I actually think it's weird that we have presidential term limits and not congressional term limits. I don't yeah. know. I don't know what the purpose of the presidential term limit is. That's yeah. pretty, a president's pretty easy to overturn every four years, right? Yeah. I mean, that's relatively easy. Overturning somebody that's an entrenched bureaucrat in Washington that has the support, not only of uh, the, the financial support from whomever's funding their shit, but also the rest of their bullshit can, uh, uh, colleagues. Yeah. Like that, that's, it's it very, it, it is you know, very difficult it, to- And, up and the media, guys. The media is 100% complicit with oh, all yeah. with, with everything they're doing, I, and and I I fall hard on the right, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, but mm. I'm watching what's going on at the border. I'm watching what's going on with the vaccine. Biden, President Biden, goes on stage and takes credit for the vaccine, says it wouldn't have happened if it weren't for him. Well, that's bullshit because President Trump is the one who pushed the drug companies mm. and paid the drug companies, promising them $2 billion to Pfizer, a $1 billion to Moderna to get a drug that will vaccinate the American people by the end of the year, by the end of 2020. Fauci, everyone said it wasn't going to happen. It happened. Biden takes credit for it. On the border, Biden blames Trump. So uh, in one sense, he's he's not giving Trump credit for something that Trump started in, in 2020. And then yet he, something that Trump had nothing to do with, this border crisis, and it's a, it's a freaking national pr crisis right now, 
Um, he's blaming Trump, literally has the balls to blame Trump for the border crisis, yet not give him credit for the vaccine. It's total hypocrisy, and the, and the media just nods approvingly because 92% of them lean left and are just thrilled there's no more Trump and are, are even happier that there's a, a President Biden. And by the way, the guy's 78 years old, as you point out, he's losing a step here and there. What in the world were they thinking electing someone that there's, there's no way going to be capable of running this country in in three and three and a half years? Yeah, I have no idea. I don't yeah, either. And what you crazy. know, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, back to the the Operation Warp Speed um, is what uh, Trump called it, you know, to uh, to get the vaccinations going and everything. Here's what I couldn't figure out, Eric, is um, he did give Pfizer two billion dollars. Moments after the election was called, uh, Pfizer came out that Monday morning and said, we've got the cure and we're, gonna, we're, we're ready to give injections. Was there something going on behind the scenes that, 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 that you know Pfizer? What, I don't know. If, you know what? That, that announcement of, of the vaccine happening, I think it was 10 days after the election. Mm -hmm. Had it been 10 days prior to the election, I think you'd see a second term President Trump. For sure. There were a couple. Of, look, he's a good friend of mine. I've I. He calls me occasionally, Trump. Um, there were a couple of mistakes he made. I, you know, Brett was, you talk about Brett saying he would vote for President Trump. Brett did a, a small video for me asking the president a question mm -hmm. two weeks before the election. I had an hour town hall with him. I kind of gave him the opening, the opportunity to, to, to kind of walk back the mask thing. And, and would you do anything differently? He said, no, I think that was probably a mistake. I think not pushing Moderna and Pfizer to, to, to put a date on that vaccine prior to the election was a mistake. And I think not giving the $2,000 per person that, that the Democrats did five minutes after Biden was elected, they just approved thousands of dollars. Trump could have done, he wanted it, but he didn't fight for it. So Trump, prior to the election, said, we're going to get every American $2,000 uh, in COVID relief. And Mitch McConnell and the, the Republicans, the old school Republicans, pushed back because they knew they were going to bury him. It would have that certainly would have helped him. There were a couple of things he could have done where I think he could have gotten the second term. So there were yeah. mistakes made. I mean, it's a real problem that uh, you you could see in the days leading up to the election, the Republican Senate and Republican Congress start to distance themselves from the president that's running. That's a that's not a problem of them being loyal to a Republican or not. That is a problem of entrenched bureaucrats in D.C. Mm -hmm having to choose one side or the other. We should be talking about issues and not political parties here, right? I mean, this, yeah. is, this is ridiculous how we've let ourselves become this. And, yeah. you know, it, it's, I, I don't get it, man. I, mean, I honestly don't understand. I guess it's just intellectual laziness. People are scared and they don't want to think for themselves. So if you give me 12 things that I get to believe and I can, uh, four or five of them, I'm like, yeah, I definitely believe that. So, all right, I'll believe the rest just to go along with this fucking charade. That's, that's kind of what I feel like it's, that it's happening right now. It is, it is poison to this country. We have got to get the fuck out of this shit. And I think the first step is term limits, but what are they going to do? Vote for themselves term limit? That's not happening. No. Eric, no, come on. No, it's like it's voting. It's like voting for a pay, a pay cut. It's never going to happen. Well, the last, the last the, constitutional the, amendment yeah. was voting for a pay increase, right? The yeah. 26th and like, what was it, 92 or some shit like that? It's the last time we amended the Constitution. Yeah, yeah, let me tell you money. something. These, these assholes in Congress, they make $174,000 a year, congressmen and senators. They don't, they don't pay for a thing. They've got free health care. They've got mm. free parking. They've got free gym memberships. they got deals. How did Joe Biden 47 years ago step into a, a, a Senate seat, uh, a, a, Repo a uh, Congress seat, then a Senate seat, spends 47 years, never worked for everyone, and is able to buy five and seven million dollar homes. There's <laughs> only one way you can do it. You got side deals, you got you get tip offs on on buying land or buying stocks, mm -hmm. which, by the way, if you and I or anyone on this podcast did it, we'd go to jail for, but they're protected under what's called a stock act. Yeah. In other words, if there's a company that's about to go public, all they need is, I don't know, that water right over there. And a, and a senator or congressman is is in charge of, of approving this law that is going to give that company that water right. They can buy that stock or buy into that company prior to that water right being given to that company. If we did that, it would be insider trading. We're done. Yeah. We're, we're, they'd lock us up, throw away the key. They can do it, though. They're protected by uh, so many protections. Yeah. So they 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 don't need more. They don't need a bigger pay cut, guys. No. They they they're they're being re remunerated in yeah yeah enumerated sure. remunerated in massive amounts. So so what's the uh, solution then? How do we get how do we get out of this? Because I mean, obviously they're not going to do it. And there's there's a there's a tipping point at some point where 
uh, people get fed up with this bullshit. And I don't know. Is there? Is there? I mean, here's what's going to happen. Like, right now, you have, a, you have a Democrat president, you have Democrat-run House, and you have Democrats in, in the Senate right now. They can, do what, they can do whatever the hell they want. Mm-hmm. So they're already talking about scaling back gun, gun rights, mm-hmm. right? They're talking about gun control. The border went from April of 2020, a year ago, there were 16,000 apprehensions at the border. This month right now, there's 110,000 already, and we're mm-hmm. not even done with March yet. I can't imagine what April one year later is going to look like. Yep. Um, it goes on and on and on. We're, we're spending the Treasury's twenty trillion in the hole. We just threw two trillion, three trillion. They want to do four trillion in infrastructure. It's 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 happening so fast. Mm-hmm. I hate to say this, and everyone's going to you know, all all the liberals or center center lefters are going to call me an asshole for this. We're headed towards if we don't stop it, and if there isn't a pendulum that has swung too far, we're headed towards I don't know some sort of socialism, maybe soft mm-hmm. socialism, maybe even harder socialism. Because they're already talking about giving us more money, yeah. sending out more checks. At what point, what, there are restaurants in Charleston that can't employ, enough, they can't find enough people to work because no one wants to work because they're getting paid right. and they're get, with, the, with the COVID relief mm-hmm. and they're getting unemployment. Who's going to work when, you, you, when they're paying you more to stay home? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah um, and the other thing that I'm worried about is big tech. Um, censoring everything because, you know, right now there is no platforms really for anybody remotely conservative Mm. to be on and join besides podcasts. I mean, anytime they do come on, it's a shit show, right? Like they get like their app gets pulled from the app store or something there, even their web services get pulled by AWS. You yes. Know what I mean? Yeah. Cause they own everything. They own the yeah. back end of everything. They own the hosting services, all that stuff. Um, since you are friends with Trump, have you chatted with him about what the next move is? Cause there, there was a, a story here about a week ago where they said, uh, he'd be making an announcement in the next two to three months about Trump having his own social media platform. Is that true? Yeah, I, I no, I haven't spoken to him. That was Jason Miller who put that out mm-hmm. late, late last week, and and it kind of shook the like, what's it going to be? Because of the whole thing about Trump being pulled off Twitter, you know, it, it's a tall order to start a whole media, I don't know, conglomerate. Mm-hmm. So you can go digital, you can do some podcasting, you can do some things like that. Where, where some subscription based stuff. You think about it, if he's got, let's assume, well, you got seventy one million votes. Let's assume only. 20% of them really love Trump. So, you know, 14 million people love Trump. If you had, if you had half of that, if you had 7 million people paying five bucks a month, you're talking, you know, a couple hundred million dollars mm-hmm. a year. He can make some money doing that. I mean, there's, there's no question he can do that, but it's a lot of, a lot of setup to, 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 to do any sort of linear TV or anything like that. My guess, they're going to put some sort of, you know, MAGA, Mug a digital product out there at some point, but I no, I have I spoke, spoken to him now, but I do speak to Jason Miller once in a while. So I think he threw that out there and what they wasn't supposed to quite reveal it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what it felt like. It felt like, oh, I accidentally said this live on air and now I'm stuck with this. Um, my question is, I, I guess, you know, shit, is it enough? You know, if he has his own platform and uh, let's say shit, let's say because the model you were essentially talking about was Patreon. Uh, If you did five bucks a month. Right. Um, And Trump did that in today's world. If you don't have any social media outlets to continue to go out to, are you able to win presidency anymore? I don't know. I don't know if he even wants to run anymore. I mean, I think at this point. I think right now he's going to be the kingmaker or or the the spoiler. Let's put it that way. If you want to be a, a Republican, you want to be elected. You got to go through yeah. you got to go through Mar-a-Lago to get the blessing, get the, the to get his kiss his ring, maybe make a drop a donation, so he doesn't spoil your chances. Because right now, you know, if you're not going to you're not going to win if you have two Republicans, one pro-Trump, one non-pro-Trump, and then against the liberal, the liberal's mm-hmm. going to win. It's going to it's it's it's, it's game over. Yeah, it'll so be ninety two. It'll be Ross you Perot versus. Yeah. George, uh, George H.W. Bush. Yeah. Ari's telling me we've got to wrap this up. Brett's got another interview. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, gentlemen, this is the, the point in the show. We get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you become the person uh, you are today. Uh, each of you real quick. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? Go ahead, Eric. Uh, I'll give mine to Brett, my, my co-host, because he, he crushed it with Ted Nugent a little mm. earlier today. Nice. Oh, uh, you guys did the Motor City Madman this morning. Yeah. 
Yeah, I may have to select Ted Nugent. He's my new hero. <laughs> that dude is legit. He's he's he doing it. Yeah, I was on a sh- I, I I did a bunch of shows with him over the summer during COVID. We were just doing shows with John Brinkus from ESPN Sports Science, uh, and now he's with Killcliffe. If you got if you know those guys, um, yeah, we we did a bunch of shows with Nugent, and he's a totally different dude than he used to be. Yeah, like he's he's really into politics but he's not a dick about it no he's a, he's a good dude yeah he's a super good guy i mean he really is i never i, I didn't know what i thought i guess i did just like poison shit from the media really but he's not what you think at all no not at all uh gentlemen it, it was a pleasure uh please check out uh bowling with far the new podcast is out now uh itunes spotify wherever you listen to your podcast uh, are you guys doing video at all or just audio we're we're just audio now. We're adding video. It's TBD very soon. Sweet. Very, very soon. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Uh, Brett, this was a, a, a childhood dream, although uh, you, you crushed our franchise. I love you, buddy. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Take drinking, care. fellas. See ya. <laughs> what a great show. Yeah, it was great. Those guys were fantastic, man. Yeah. Um, I listened to their podcasts uh, on the way uh, over to the studio this morning. The one morning. with Corolla is really good. Yeah. Really good. Um, because Corolla is, let's face it, the godfather of podcasting. He um, definitely is, yeah. He was the very first to do that mm-hmm. all on his own. And, and what I liked about uh, their show was they weren't afraid to ask Adam questions about getting into podcasting, what you have to do, and all that other stuff. Right. Um, because... It is a new medium and a lot of these guys are coming over from traditional media because it's it's dying and they're heading into podcasts and uh and you do have to ask those questions about what's going on and i meant what i said earlier about uh, developing your own products and getting them out into the world like because in case they try to cancel uh us and 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 by 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 them i'm I'm saying like sponsors and and Mm -hmm. other shits um I think it is important that you do have your own products to sell and your own things and, and all that. Patreon's also a, a big help these days too, where it's it just like- Until they start you know, censoring shit. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. I, I, that, that was my you question know. for you. Do, do you think they will? Maybe, I mean, it depends on what you mean by censoring. They're already pretty rough on women over there. Like if, you're, if you have a Twitch or Patreon stream and you uh, are one of those women that, that's a gamer that does cosplay, if you're- if your costume or whatever the fuck is showing a little bit too much, according to them, mm-hmm. they'll get butt hurt about that and pull all your shit down. Really? You know I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, maybe we all end up on OnlyFans at some point. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but maybe they have political beliefs too. Who knows? So maybe fucking sucking dicks over there is fine, but not not talking about politics. You know what I mean? Who the fuck knows these days? People are so risk averse. Yeah. It's insane. This, we are playing social prevent defense right now. That's mm-hmm. what's happening. And when the fuck has prevent defense work? Nobody wins when they play to lose or yeah. play not to lose. Nobody wins like that. We all lose if we play not to lose. And it's absolute fucking nonsense that we were even thinking about doing that shit. The thing that I keep racking my brain over is what the next thing is, right? Yeah. Like if, if what you're saying is true, like Patreon and everything else, right? Is the blockchain the next thing where it's like, you know, can they stop you? Is there a form of internet out there that isn't controlled or backed by anyone that they could shut it down? Yeah, I'm actually, uh, I've got Ari looking into a guy that he, he's more on the tech side mm-hmm. of, of uh, blockchain technology and cryptocurrency and stuff like that about how the tech is going to be developed and stuff like that. A decentralized internet is definitely something that we're looking towards right now. Like it's, it's going to happen. Uh, and you know, I, I know I bring this book up a lot, but I highly recommend everyone go read The Master Switch by uh, Tim Wu and understand how government has been complicit, especially the American government, but even, even the UK governments and previous governments way back in the day uh, have been complicit in creating monopolies, one, so they can get kickbacks and two, so they can control things. Right. I don't know how they're going to do it this time, but I, you can bet your ass they're going to fucking try. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way they're not going to try to control everything. Yeah, and, you know, we before we went on air, we were talking about the cryptocurrency thing, too. And yeah. um, I mean, uh, Visa just decided to, we'll, we'll do a story about that on fake news, so that'll be shit. I don't even know when this is going live, actually. Yeah, tonight. Uh, so I mean, it'll be in a couple of days. Yeah, so it'll be a couple of days from now. We also have a big story with James Klug. Mm-hmm. If you haven't been following him on uh, Instagram, I recommend going. It's J-A-M-E-S-K-L-U-G. Go follow him on Instagram so you can get a little primer on what, what's been going on down at the border. 
and then we'll we'll have a show Monday night next week or uh, Sunday night rather next week that details all that shit. But cryptocurrency Visa is now going to take it. Yes. PayPal is now going to take it. Yep. And that was after the announcement last week. Right. Right. So it's becoming very pervasive in society now. But we are only talking about the investment mechanisms. Nobody out. Nobody in the mainstream is talking about the tech part. Yes. And that's what I'm interested it's in. It's the most interesting part. And it's the part yeah. that it it's the part that may save everyone. You know what I mean? It, it feels like it. Yeah. Um, but I, I part of me is like, man, is the government going to put their fucking dirty dicks in there and try to, to, to fuck with that as well? Well, they're going to certainly try. Yeah. But I, how, how can they is the question. Well, right now you can't tax Bitcoin, right? Um, I mean, if you transfer money from Bitcoin into USD into your bank account, then you should be paying a cap. If you're not paying capital gains on that, then you're fucking yourself over long term. You're right. going to get audited at some point. Right. But if you keep it in crypto, I don't know how they even, I mean, to be honest, if you're, if they don't have access, like crypto is not FDIC insured, right? So the government mm -hmm. can't talk to the bank and be like, Hey, we need your reporting. Uh, they can't go to a fucking, uh, uh, what is it? Coinbase or mm -hmm. whatever and say, Hey, I want this person's account. And if you transfer your crypto onto one of the encrypted drives or something like that, that's off of one of the platforms and it's just crypto stored on something. I mean, they have to one, be able to decrypt it and find out what the fuck's on it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Also have to find it in your possession or at least prove that it, it belongs to you. But, but you tough. and I, yeah, it's, it's tough, but you and I have had friends who have bought like shit. I'm not going to say who it is, but we had a friend who bought a, a full office building with Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah. Um, and how is that reported? I guess. So I don't know. That's a good question. I, I like, I, I would like to get somebody on to, uh, to answer all of that because shit, man, if, if we're looking at it, if you're getting into credit cards and everything now, right. Yeah. It's getting big enough where the government's going to start poking around. Um, I mean, they're certainly going to try, but again, I don't know what the mechanism for doing it is. I mean, they're going to have to sue somebody somewhere, but the problem is with decentralization. So if it's Bank of America, you can go to Bank of America and be like, hey, we're going to fucking shut your business down unless you start giving us shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. For, right, for better or worse or right or wrong, they can do that. For Coinbase, I mean, yeah, they do have servers and they have all this other shit, but it's, it's an encrypted stuff. And the, the uh, Coinbase could be like, all right, we'll give it to you in 48 hours and then send an email out to all their customers, pull all your crypto out of our fucking shit and put it on a drive. Right. And that's it. You know what I mean? Uh, so I don't know. I don't know what the government's going to do. I know they're going to try. So we, we need to get somebody on that knows way more about how this technology works to figure out what the pitfalls might be government wise. And I know that. Um, so moving money around. From me to you, like if you and I make some transaction, what the fuck entitles the government to any of that? That's what I don't understand. Um, like and, and if it's if it's if it's commerce, like if it's a tr if I if I'm paying you a million dollars for a bunch of coffee mugs or whatever, mm -hmm. and you have to use a truck to deliver it to me, fine, I'll pay a little tax because that road got built for it, right? Yeah, the infrastructure got built for it. I'm fine with that. But if you and I just trade something and it doesn't involve any infrastructure, I'm not paying any fucking taxes on that. You can suck my dick, dude. You're not entitled to my fucking money, government. Fuck you. Like, what? why would you be entitled to that? And I'm not an anti-tax guy. I don't like that because I like a good education mm -hmm. because I don't want to live in a country full of fucking morons. I like infrastructure because I don't want to drive on bumpy roads. I like infrastructure because I, don't, I want police to be funded, right? And I want politicians to be defunded, by the way. Um, I like that stuff. So I don't mind paying a reasonable amount of taxes. What I don't like is when Buttigieg comes out and says, Hey, our infrastructure is failing. We need to fucking raise taxes on everybody. How about you stop wasting my fucking money on Saudi Arabia first, bitch? Yeah. How about that? How about we stop wasting our money on foreign wars? How about we stop letting fucking hundreds of thousands of people come into this country and, and, and prey on our fucking systems first? Let's do that first. And then I'll, we can figure out how much it really costs. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a, we need a hard reset here. Well, Buttigieg already walked that back, by the way. Of course he did. Yeah. Of course he, because it's a fucking retarded thing to say. Nobody's going to fucking let you get away with that shit. But this is, the, the, these people, these are test balloons. They just come out and say the most ridiculous shit. And if not enough people make noise about it, like, all right, cool, we can get away with this. Let's do it. You know what I mean? It's like asking your girlfriend for a threesome. Yeah. You just yeah. drop a little subtle hint. Like, hey, she's, she's high. You ever been with a woman before? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> And then she's like, uh, you know, in college, and you're like, oh, here, oh, you go. here yeah. we go. Uh, that's basically what it is. And they, but in, instead of trying to, uh, you know, have a little fun, they're trying to fucking reach into your wallet and take food off your family's table. Yeah, that's 
little bit more nefarious, right, than just trying to bank two checks at one time. So, you know, it is what it is. They're going to keep trying to in, in, uh, launch these incursions into our lives and take our money, and we're going to keep trying to fight them off. And more people are going to get fooled into thinking government cares about them. Luckily, for all his stupid shit, Trump kind of brought that to light a little bit more than it's been brought to light before in the past. Right. That the government doesn't give a fuck about you. There's two warring parties that have, and it, look, Eric Bowling even, he, he's a, a, a guy that leans pretty heavily right according to himself. Yeah, even but he, he was on Fox for years, obviously. For sure, so. but even he says, yeah, he doesn't trust the Republican politicians either. No. Why, why would you? No. They're all uh, cunts. Well, at this point, and, and look, people are flipping right, left and right now, you know? Mm. Uh, fucking Kensinger. Jesus Christ, yeah. man. That guy will not shut the fuck up about anything. Um, yeah, he's a clown. He, he's, he's fallen in love with the sound of his own voice. And uh, the story of narcissists uh, is, it was a warning sign, warning tale for that. You're going to turn into flowers there, Adam. Yeah. Fucking pussy. It's strange, man. Um, it, it's, getting, it's getting strange out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, the, in the world right now, I'm like, fuck, man, I, I, I can't make any sense of it. Like, I, I, every morning I wake up and I'm like, all right, what's the next thing? There's no sense to be made of any of this. No, no. It's like, what's, what's the next thing that's going to happen? What, what's, you know, who's going to get canceled? What are we going to be angry about? What's, what are we pissed yeah. about? Because um, that white thing in Oakland, by the way, part of me didn't think that was true. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, saw another story on it last night and you were right. And they were wondering, they were like, Hey, are, are you allowed to do this? Is this legal? Yeah. Um, but, I, but I guess, yes, no, no I, it's no, it's not. So are people filing lawsuits? Uh, it, Cause you brought, you, you brought this story to light and then it's starting to gain a little steam. It's starting to, uh, to gain a little steam right now. But, uh, yeah. uh, before you brought it up, I was like, that can't be true. Um, no, it is definitely true. And yes, people immediately, I mean, look, uh, if, if they had any stones, the ACLU would be filing a federal lawsuit right now. Just, just at the fact and they would be filing an injunction in the ninth circuit court, of, uh, about this right now. But I don't know if they, if they are, to be honest, the ACLU clearly falls on one side of the political spectrum. Yeah. So who knows what they're going to do, but this is their job. The reason the ACLU exists is to stop shit like this from happening. Well, this is where you lived. Yeah. I lived in Oakland for years. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of poor white people too, my man. Yeah, I, that was my next question. Is there? Because I, I don't. Yeah. I haven't spent a lot of time there. Not nearly as many uh, p- poor white people as black people in the city of Oakland, but in the surrounding areas, absolutely. Okay. Uh, but it, it doesn't matter. Poor is poor. I, I, I agree. Hungry is hungry. Yeah. Right. Tired is tired, and we're supposed to be breathing are bringing all of them who want to breathe free into our arms. That's what the fucking. That's what it says on the sign on the front door, motherfucker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh man, I, I it's it's a great time to have a podcast. At least mm. you know shit, man. Every single day, yeah, uh, something is gonna pop up, and it's not gonna stop. I, he was alluding to it earlier. Eric's like, when is this gonna stop? Is it? No, I don't think it will. I don't think it will. When you control the media on top of everything else, mm. dude, that's not gonna fucking stop. Yep. Uh, this is this is it's gonna keep going. Yeah, it certainly will. Uh, you and I will be on blockchain pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who is that? By the way, who is that funded by? Uh, what do you mean? It's funded by you and everybody else that's invested in cryptocurrency. Um, th- so it's a, like, like the, the back end of that is just... Technology, yeah. That's it, huh? Yeah. Because um, the, the Trump thing that I was asking him about, whether or not he's going to have his own platform, um, they were saying that could possibly be funded by Russia and, and possibly be held on like a, a Russian server. Well, I mean, yeah, those, that's one of the options. That was one of the options for, uh, for both Clubhouse and uh, what's that other one that nobody remembers anymore? <sighs> Fuck, it's a great question. What's that, what's that conservative social media site? That, oh, Parler. Parler. Yes, yes, yes. No one gives a fuck about Parler anymore. Yeah, well, they're, they're dead. Yeah. They, they, they're trying to come back to life now. No, they, had a, they fucking just can't get their app on the App Store. Now. No, they can't, no. But they have a website. Right? Yeah, they have a website. Sorry. But- Who's going to go having a website is like having a, a, a fucking physical mailing address yeah. basically at this point. Like, sorry. Yeah. It's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. Cause uh, nobody's going on their desktop to, yeah. to look at social media. Well, old people will, but no one cares about them. What is it? 84% are using mobile for all their social media apps. So who's going to go on a desktop? Um, yeah. What were you saying? Did you just make that stick up? No. 
Okay. No, no it's, we it's uh, eighty four to ninety percent. Yeah, it, it actually could be higher, by the way, right yeah. now, Giorgio. It used to be the opposite. I was just wondering. When yeah. We, when we first started, when I, f- shit, in 2016, when we first started all this, um, it was 10% mobile and then 90% desktop yeah. for social media. Now it's flipped. Yep. So. Uh, and then the other weird part about it is, you know, one person really can change a platform. Mm-hmm. We've seen it on our side when, when Joe Rogan went to Spotify, because we get the analytics for, for all of our shows behind the thing. Yep. Um, uh, fuck, man. What are we down to? Like, I think like 53% on iTunes now. Um, it used to be 94% iTunes. Mm-hmm. Once Rogan went to Spotify, like, dude, we s- spiked in Spotify. We're up to like 20 or 30% now. Yeah. So one person can really change it. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if Trump gets in and uh, one of these platforms and actually does change it, but who hosts it and, and who's going to put it in their app store? Right. We'll uh, see. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's we'll the mystery see. behind I mean, all of this. Ultimately, uh, someone's, you're, you're going to have to sue Apple. And the, this is what I've been talking about for the last two years on this show. Uh, the tech companies being able to box out certain people, they're going to have to start showing a cause for why they're doing it. If the cause is not good, right? If it's, if it's politically motivated then uh, there's going to be lawsuits and the argument will come down to whether as a private company, they're allowed to do that. Or if they've reached the level of a public utility at this point, it can no longer discriminate based on political party. Mm -hmm. And that is, that'll be the fucking deciding factor. And that's the thing we need to get to now Uh, as soon as possible. That shit needs to happen. Well, we'll see. Uh, PayPal, by the way, uh, breaking news. They're, they're with Bitcoin and Ethereum as well. And, and Litecoin. Mm Mm-hmm. What's it, Dan? What's uh, fake Dan? What's Litecoin? You guys are all shit. It's an altcoin. There's no, no, there's nothing. It's just another fucking cryptocurrency. No, it's been around for a minute. Uh, yeah. It's more efficient than Bitcoin. So Bitcoin takes a lot of fucking energy to make. Yeah. Uh, Litecoin is essentially the same thing, but way more efficient. But the cap is way lower too, right? Uh, yeah. So. Do you have any of that? Do you have any Litecoin? Uh, Dan, you have some Litecoin, right? I used to. Uh, I got rid of it because it's not a name brand. Yeah. Like right now, Bitcoin is Jordan, right? Like. It's Nike. Yeah. It's and so there's a markup on it. And also it's very inefficient because everyone, all these computers to mine the Bitcoin or validate the transactions, which is what it does, it uses the, the computer's processing power to basically process this equation to uh, validate something. But because Litecoin and Ethereum's math is better, it takes less processing power vis-a-vis less energy on the grid to run those computers. And therefore, it gives you the same amount of validation, but for less energy, making it better but it doesn't doesn't it. doesn't matter because bitcoin is a, what, what is called a category of one like coke mm-hmm. or nike right but there's always going to be a pepsi or a fucking reebok you sure, know it, it's there and you can make a lot of money Shit, you can make money on penny stocks if you do it right yeah in, you know in I mean? marketing they called those dogs in this in the four quadrant square mm. which, yeah, yeah which then i would you know call it dogecoin yeah <laughs> <laughs> just a little dog head on a on a gold coin you know, that's all we're doing now. Well, the, the gold coin is, is just a, a logo. It, it, that's it, yeah. I, but it's a, fun, it's a fun, flirty little logo. It's a little dog head on there. Mark Cuban bought a bunch. Our Lord and Savior, Elon Musk, yeah. has just a tweet about it. So, you know, it's in his custom NFT. Yeah, he's so. Mark, Cu- or, uh, Mark Cuban. Uh, Elon Musk is not altruistic. He's manipulating the market so he can make money. I think he's trolling it, but I'm here for it. No, uh, he's not trolling it. He's manipulating the market because he is heavily invested in it. That's it. He's, he is not looking out for you, although you do benefit from it. So pay attention. Yeah, you know and I'm, I mean? I'm fine with it. I actually like Musk. No, I like him, too. I'm just saying he's not doing this out of the kindness of his heart. He's doing it because he is heavily invested. And his two companies, major companies, are also heavily invested. Yeah. Are we sure his heart is not a robot now? Uh, Could be. No, he's not Mark Zuckerberg. Could be. I, you, you never know. Are we getting know. flagged for saying MZ? Uh, what's MZ? Mark Zuckerberg, should we bleep that out? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Oh, actually, we just went down on YouTube or yeah. Facebook. We just went down on Facebook. So uh. <laughs> I'm waiting for the Apple thing. By the way, everybody keeps saying that Apple's new phone uh, is going to have some privacy restrictions against Facebook. Is that real? Uh, yeah, they're doing all they can to combat. Uh, basically, is they're they're making you accept Facebook tracking you in other apps and be like, hey, this is so annoying. Do you want Facebook to track you? And be like, oh no, I don't want that. Yeah, because if you we went through that with Jared that day, remember? Yeah. yeah. Even even I looked into it further afterwards. Even if you go through all of Facebook shit and turn it off, they still collect the data. But what also sucks is Instagram collects twice as much data, and like people aren't gonna like 
not have Instagram. I know. They're too yeah. addicted to it. So. God. And that's what Facebook knows. They're like, we, we got you on, we, like, we got the cocaine over here, but we know we have you on the heroin. Like, we yeah. got you on the strong stuff. We got you on the gram. So we're going to track everything you do. The, 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 the hardest thing I have with it all is, is since it's AI now, they don't get jokes either. So like you can, I got banned for 24 hours on Drinking Bro Sports. By the way, I got the, the new tea here. Uh, if you can see it. Yeah. Woo! Uh, those are out in drinkingbros.com. I got banned for 24 hours on Facebook for a, a, literally a joke. No picture, no nothing. All I said was, hey man, does anybody have a link for those Sister Jean nudes? Um, you know, the 103 yeah. three year old lady. Facebook did not get the humor in that. And, uh, and they banned me for 24 hours saying that I was um, soliciting. I've surprisingly nudes. never been banned from Facebook. Really? Uh, yeah, except yeah. for when I'm reposting drinking bro stuff. But I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got the 24 hour ban on that. So, you know, we'll see. I, fuck, man. If it's not a human back there, what's that going to do for comedy then? Um, what if it was? What if it was just a bunch of old white women? And that, I, that, that's that's who's employing all of them. I would be better with that than a robot. I think where no. it's like, all right, great. No. I'd rather have a robot than a bunch of Karens clutching their fucking pearls, man. Jesus Christ, we've had enough of that bullshit. I want to know that there's a human saying, "Hey, I don't appreciate your joke." No, because and I'm banning you. Machines can learn. Karens can't. Clearly, <laughs> they've had years to fucking figure out their shit, and they just continue to be cunts. So get fucked. <laughs> Is that your new shirt? Stop, Karens. Uh, Defund Karen. It's just Karen and then a fucking circle and a line through it. <laughs> I feel bad for all the Karens that were born before this shit and now they've got to live with this name. I don't know why it's people chose the name Karen. We should do a, t a study. I don't either. It's just stuck. If there's some kind of uh, correlation Same between. Same with Chad if and Brad. If you're a hot Karen out there, please send us your picture. Because like, I've never met a hot Karen. Really? I went, to, I went to high school with one. Really? Yes. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and now I feel bad. Is she still hot? Yes, but they, she's got like 90 kids. So, really? Yeah. Karen. I mean, rejuvenation. If, if, if you're hot, yeah, that's it's what happens. She's got to tighten it back up, a little silicone injection. That's what happens. I'm not, I'm not saying it's that. Like, she I looks mean, great. I'm, I'm, you, you mentioned the amount of kids she has. Oh, Karen, well, Karen Gillian, Gillen, maybe? She played Nebula in, uh, in uh, the Avengers movies. Ah, there you she's go. hot. Yeah, there's, 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 there's a lot one. of hot Karens. If there's one, there's more than one. That's yes. how it works, yeah. right? So yeah. There's a lot of hot Karens yeah. out there. I just feel bad because that's the name that that's they're the stuck with That's the cockroach principle, Dan? Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's part of the Drake equation, actually. If there's one, there has to be more, and that's where the premise from the Drake equation comes from, and that is uh, wheelchair Jimmy Drake. Not, yes. Not the scientist. Obviously, uh, Toronto, six, 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 six. Yeah. When's his new you album You can't say out? 666 anymore because Lil Nas X is out there fucking uh, giving lap dances to the devil now. Everybody's so offended by that. Like, you weren't offended by uh, rockets shooting out of Katy Perry's teddies, but all of a sudden the gay dude does it, and you're like, oh, fucking that's gross and devils. Yeah. Man. The devil's not real, bitch. <laughs> the other thing about it is uh, uh, Nike did not approve those no, no, shoes, no, no. They, and uh, they're suing the company that put those out. Yeah, they're knockoffs. Yeah. Because there's no way. That's a very specific uh, uh, release of Nike shoe, yep. right? That they tailored after the fact, and there's no way they could have gotten their hands on that many of them. So no. they, they, I mean, they're getting sued. But this is good press for everybody, right? It, great for Lil, because Lil Nas X um, is not getting sued. It's the it's the shoe company that yeah. that made the knockoff. So for yeah. him, fuck man, I was looking at his YouTube numbers. He's a, that, that video is already 50 million views yeah. already. So Lil Nas X is doing fine. Yep, you don't have to worry about him. Uh, D'Anthony, it was a fun show. Yep, Brett Favre, man. Big Holy time. shit. Very nice. Holy shit. Uh, who are you sexting right now? Who, me? Yeah. Uh, we have a giveaway going on right now. Danny just posted about it on the interwebs. It's the, uh, well, I don't have one here on me right now, but it's the uh, pedophile hunter hat that you saw Chuck Liddell wearing the other oh, day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, hey, there's one over there. Xander. Uh, yeah, toss me one of those hats. Pop one over there. Yeah, yeah, you actually saw Xander and Chuck Liddell wearing it. There it on is. The, uh, this is a different color than the one we're giving out, but I'm going to sign five of these. So if you go on all of our sites, Drinking Bros, American Party, et cetera, uh, Ross Paz Revolution, Tags yep. of Friends, you got to follow them, uh, and then some other stuff if you go look at the post, and you'll enter into a contest to win one of these, one of the five ones that I've signed. Fun little flirty thing. Yeah. Right? Is uh, it, where, where, where's she posted at? Uh, it's on, right now it's on Drinking Bros Park, Podcasts and uh, 
it'll be on some other ones. We'll, we'll share it around all of our social media sites. Okay, cool. So everybody can enter. Cool. Um, and if you're out there and you want to get some merch, go to drinkingbros.com for the new tees. We're all stocked up. The new stickers. Uh, the fucking... The Pornhub shirt is out. The Pornhub... Uh, yeah. It's Drink, out. Drinking Bros shirt and the Pornhub logo is, is on the side I'm right ordering now. that now. Yeah. Uh, dude, a bunch of shit is selling out. I, I saw some uh, some sizes were already out. We'll, we'll restock those. Um, we were not expecting these shirts to blow up this quickly. Uh, this, mm. <laughs> the gay for straight shirts, the best of all time. Yeah, that's another one. So uh, Chuck just was like out in public. He was out at Lake Travis the other day wearing yep. that gay for straight shirt, yeah. doing karaoke on the boat and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan of that. Yeah. Um, and then also that's where you can uh, submit your drinking bro of the week. And we will read that live on air. Yeah. Obviously, if we have guests, we will, we will give it to them uh, and let yep. them give their drinking bro of the week. But uh, we appreciate you. Tuning in, kids. Go to iTunes, rate the show uh, a five star, and leave a quick review. That's uh, that's what helps keep us on top of the charts on iTunes and all that stuff. So uh, so please do that. For Anthony, Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. We are the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.